Hey guys, I made a huge mistake. I bought this. Note 5.8. Basically, Mercedes prequel to what is today the Sprinter. And it's a huge mistake to have bought this. Mainly, no, let's begin differently. This thing has a lot of charm. It's a lot rounder and um, older and with that comes that it looks a lot more charmy and friendly than a modern sprinter would and that charm is something to be said about it also is actually a little bit wider on the inside than modern sprinters are it's 185 I guess while modern sprinters are about 170, 178 um, and it's simple most people who buy these buy these because you can fix everything on the side of the road if you know how to weld basically nothing is forbidden to you so why then do i think this is a mistake come on put you straight this thing is not for me basically. It needs a lot of basic work and there needs to be a lot of things. I wrote something down. So the one thing it is is that it's old and with that comes it's loud as you really cannot hear any music while you're driving or uh, have anything, any conversation with your passenger or anything like that. Um, with being loud comes it's also slow as f it's 80 kilometers an hour is its top speed when it's going on a flatland and if you're going uphill and you're going down to 60. Um, if you're really going uphill you're going down to 40 or 30 even which is super slow. Both of those things together come in with the idea that if you're driving more than like 150k a day or 200k a day, you're gonna feel the work you did. It's not like my T5 and it's not like a modern day sprinter where it basically eats up all the road. It doesn't. It lets you work for it. Um, with being slow, with being old also comes it has no ABS. It has no... Um, it actually has power steering. There is no um, uh, sensible ride height or anything. So given if you're in a crosswind or if, you, if there is even rain or something like that, you're going to feel that and you're going to have to work around that. Basically, you're going to know how to drive and you're going to be on it. You're going to always be on it. Which is kind of scary for me, the amount I'm driving. It also is unwieldy. I parked some big cars in the past um, and that actually 
due to how wide it is, it, wide it is, is one of the uh, most unwieldy cars I've ever been in. It feels like you're not never gonna fit in any road you're gonna try and uh, drive down or anything like that. Um, it's also a lot of work that needs to be done to this particular car before it's starting to look like a car that I would like. There is um, a lot of rust. Um, the previous owner did put a skylight in, which is not the best idea if you're living in here because that skylight is simply glass on the roof and it heats up. And there is no ventilation built into this, so I, gotta, I would need to put that out. Um, I would need to paint all the hull um, because the paint got really dull. And one major thing for me still is after all the work is done and everything is perfect, it still remains a car that is extremely loud on the road and that isn't really made for or doesn't really enjoy going up mountains. And for somebody who's paragliding, going up mountains is something that your car should do. So yeah. I basically fucked up um, and I gotta need to sell this thing again and then we're gonna see what we're gonna do next. So the basic idea is to sell this guy. Um, Again, hoping I won't make any loss on it. And then um, the good thing that came out of it is that I actually know I want a modern car for my next project. So after selling that, I'm gonna hold out for a sprinter van and try and build that. So that's the story of today. Never fall in love with the charm of a car over everything else or something like that. See you guys next week.